Good morning, Bemidji State University, and welcome to the fourth episode of What's New BSU. I'm Andy Bartlett, Executive Director of Communications and Marketing, and I'd like to thank all of you for joining me here this morning. Um, this has been a, a kind of a crazy show. Uh, we had a scheduling snafu and thought that we had a guest lined up, but it was the guest that I had lined up for next week. So we scrambled and I would like to thank Angie Clark for coming in for us as a pinch hitter today. Uh, she found out that she was doing this or she agreed to do this for us about 30 minutes ago. So thank you very much, Angie, for being here. Uh, first, let's get started with this week's countdown. That's right, everybody. Seven more days are down. It's only 21 days, three weeks until commencement. We are officially in the stretch run of this. Five weeks into coronavirus chaos, three weeks to go until commencement. So thanks again to all of you who are watching the show this morning for everything that you've done over the last month plus to help our students get ready for graduation and to help our students finish their semester. So first this morning, let's meet one of our pets. This is Sunny from Carissa Menifee, who is Associate Director of Communications and Marketing. So let's meet Sunny. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. I didn't notice that picture of Sunny with the beer on her head until I had watched this about three times, and it's so funny. And then when Carissa reached out and said she wanted to do this, she sent me this picture, and I said, yes, absolutely do something with Sunny. This is so awesome. All right, so now, like I mentioned, it's time for this week's featured guest. Um, so let's get started with that. All right, so this week's featured guest is Angie Clark, Summer Program Director. And the timing of this is actually really good because for those of you who were at President Hensrud's open forum with the campus yesterday, uh, one of the things that she mentioned in her remarks was the work that the Living Well Working Well Committee has been doing on campus to try and encourage all employees to take care of themselves while we are working in this crazy COVID-19 environment and we're all in our home workspaces and not on campus and if you're like me, not moving around nearly to the extent that you used to. Uh, so the importance of just doing things to take care of ourselves. And I know Angie has done a lot of work with Living Well, Working Well, so it'll be fun to talk to her this morning about that. Uh, so first, Angie, thank you again for joining us this morning. And maybe just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been at BSU for those of us who might be watching who um, haven't had a chance to meet you yet. All right, well, thank you for having me this morning. I've been at BSU for a little over seven years, and right away when I started working here, um, well, I'm, I'm the summer program director, but I uh, have been involved with the Living Well, Working Well Committee for about the same length of time, so about seven years, a little over seven years. 
So what was it about what the Living Well, Working Well Committee um, tries to do for employees at BSU that got you interested in uh, getting involved in, in doing this kind of work for the campus employees? Well, I know how, you know, exercise and sleeping and eating right has impacted my life and has helped me maintain pretty good work-life balance throughout my life. So I just wanted to help promote that and encourage others to do the same so that they can reduce their stress and anxiety and just kind of come to work and be more efficient and feel a little bit more energetic and motivated. So um, yeah, and when I first came here, uh, there was the off-campus health fairs that were happening. And so, um, I just saw this as just a really good opportunity to get involved and help utilize some of my interests and skills and help support things that were already happening and maybe promote some new things too. Oh, that's great. You sort of touched on one of the things that I have always thought was really impressive about the work that the Living Well, Working Well Committee does. Just that at its core, it's a, a group of employees on campus who really are volunteering their time to make sure that other employees on campus have some skills and strategies and techniques to help take care of themselves. Um, one of the things that you have been doing during this work from home period that we're all in that I think is very cool is some of your uh, you, you've moved some of your weekly yoga classes to Zoom, and I know that you've been doing yoga for a while, so I guess talk a little bit about your background with yoga and how you got into that as an instructor, and then what the process has been like for you to move those classes into a virtual format. Sure. So I've been a very active and kinesthetic person my whole life, and so I've always enjoyed group fitness. and many years ago when I was a member of a YMCA, yoga was just one of the classes that they offered as part of their group fitness package. And I started going and I just really loved it and could really see myself teaching yoga. And so I attended some uh, weekend workshops to kind of get my foot in the door in terms of teaching. And over the years, there's just been a demand. People, you know, find out that you know how to teach yoga and they want you to come to their facilities, the state park or um, the campus um, student union, whatever. And so um, once I started teaching a lot more, I realized that I needed to get additional training so that I could be an even better instructor because I was teaching more diverse audiences and just wanting to uh, learn some new things and teach some new things. So about a year ago, I went through the 200 hour yoga teacher training and um, got my certification there. And I'm in a 300 hour teaching teaching program now. So just I'm continuing to learn new things and it's been really exciting because I've really enjoyed sharing my knowledge with every everyone else, especially the employees that work on campus. So doing more breathing techniques, more meditation type things as part of my teaching, so. Yeah, I, I you had mentioned, we were talking about something else a couple of weeks ago and you had mentioned that the, uh, you were taking these trips to Minneapolis to do this yoga training. And I am very surprised to learn that being a yoga instructor is the kind of thing that requires 500 hours of training. Um, so the, the fact that you're, you're doing that and that you're going to that kind of personal effort to be able to improve the services that you're providing for employees at BSU is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So what, what are those classes like? What kinds of things do you, do you learn during 300 hours of yoga instructor training? Well, uh, I'll be talking about one of the topics next week at the Lunch and Learn. And we, so some of the topics involve more holistic health. Uh, so really connecting the body and mind with breathing. So um, we do a lot of breathing techniques, meditation. We also focus a lot on anatomy. And then of course, um, sequencing for different classes and being able to adapt different postures of yoga for different types of bodies. 
Um, some, some postures have physical limitations. Um, not everyone can just dive right into a handstand or you know, a dynamic balancing pose. So you gotta be able to teach to the level of your students as well as help them build the strength and endurance to be able to get into some of the, the deeper and stronger postures. So um, yeah, the last training that I had involved a lot of, um, a lot more of the holistic health. We talked about marma points, so different places in the body that help release um, a different fascia in the body to um, kind of help the body become more mobile and more supple. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot broader than I ever expected that it would be. Um, when we talk about yoga, a lot of times we think that it's just a physical practice that you show up for 40 minutes and you do this sequence of things with your body, but it's, a, it's actually more of a lifestyle. Um, so there's different, um, there's eight limbs of yoga, which involves more of a code of ethics or um, a, a daily practice of just doing no harm, you know, not saying mean things to people, um, not taking more than what you need. So some of those types of practices as well. Interesting. So I, when we were chatting before the show, I, I had said one of the things that I've always thought was really impressive about you is just the vast number of things that you're involved in. And I, I know that you have had a big role to play in things like the Blue Ox Marathon here in town. And I saw you on Facebook just earlier this week, uh, giving a series of tips about how to take care of your bike. So I, I just talk a little bit about the kinds of things that you're involved with in the community and how those sort of tie in with the work that you've done here on campus with Living Well, Working Well. Yeah, so I have been involved in Bike Bemidji, which is a nonprofit organization in the community. And a big part of that organization is to promote Bemidji as a bicycle friendly community and also to teach safe riding skills because um, there is sort of an art to riding your bike. Um, I think it's kind of a myth that it's like something you learn as a kid and it's just supposed to come back to you naturally as an adult and you're just supposed to feel safe and secure riding your bike. But in Bike Bemidji, we um, are more of an advocacy group for um, safe, safe pathways um, for bicycling. So um, like the bike route around the lake is sort of an initiative that came about before the organization, but it's just continuing to grow and expand as there's like new developments on the north side of town and that sort of a thing. But um, so in terms of like bicycle safety, um, I noticed, you know, that a lot of our students ride bikes around campus and they're not always the most aware <laughs> of their surroundings. And it was kind of a concern of mine that, um, that it was a, almost a hazard more than a, a productive means of transportation. So with Living Well, Working Well and the collaboration with the Bike Bemidji event, we were able to host a league cycling instructor training on campus. And so we managed to get, I think, well, Jordan, Lutz, and myself got trained as league cycling instructors, but we also held a um, bicycle safety sort of 101 workshop, and we had about 12 or 15 people participate in that, and there were other staff members on campus that participated. So we... We have um, more people on campus that are trained on how to properly fit a helmet, how to do an ABC quick check to make sure that the bike is working um, in uh, a high functioning manner so that it's safe to ride as well as um, learning how to ride with traffic. I think the biggest thing is just being conspicuous and being aware of your surroundings when you're riding a bike. So. Um, it was nice that we were able to offer that and we're hoping to do more education on campus for um, different classes, um, maybe like first year seminar as well as um, even some of the physical education classes. So 
Oh, that sounds great. So uh, we've got about two minutes left. Let's talk about your actual job. Um, the coronavirus has created lots of havoc for everyone and summer programs I know are no different. So what, what sort of impact has this situation had on your work and what kinds of things have you had to do to uh, scramble to get summer programs either rescheduled or work to have them done at another time or moved to a virtual format or what what sort of what sort of things have you been doing in your normal job to, to sort of keep up with this ever-changing coronavirus situation well one of the challenges with bemidji is that our summer season is relatively short it's really only about two months compared to other places so a lot of the things that we were offering had to be canceled because there just wasn't time to really reschedule them um, but the Writers Conference has moved online, so the public forums that we have, the public readings will be available to the public still. So folks in Bemidji that are used to attending that event can still do that through Zoom. And uh, one of the events that we were going to host, which was a, a Habitat for Humanity bike ride, uh, there, were, there was a group of folks that were gonna ride five, 500 miles this summer, and now that event has been turned into a virtual uh, event as well. So that way they can still do their fundraising, but at a social distance um, with the social distance practice. So just oh, getting creative. Really... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's great. Well, thank you again very much for taking the time to join us this morning and for uh, agreeing to kind of pinch hit on short notice. Uh, this was great. And I hope some, some of our attendees this morning uh, learned some new things about the services that you provide and some of the work that Living Well, Working Well does to help take care of our employees. So thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Okay, so next on the show, uh, last week we started talking about hobbies and if you'll indulge me um, for the next few minutes, I thought it would be fun and not at all embarrassing to give those of you who are tuned in today, a tour of my basement. Yes, there's supposed to be audio. Let me figure out why there is not. Oh, because I forgot to turn it on. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. So first, this little corner of the laundry room is my model building area. It is mostly a collection of shame projects that I haven't started yet. But I was able to find some time to start putting together some of the pieces from a miniatures game called Star Wars Legion. And these are kind of awesome do back in the front Jin or so from Rogue One a bunch of Wookiees these are cool this is my wife's corner of the basement this is her jigsaw puzzle collection this is a result of our love for goodwill and garage sales most of these we've picked up for like I don't know, 50 cents or a dollar or something. We've been doing a lot of puzzles during the pandemic so far. This wall is mostly things that aren't done. This shelf is mostly things that my wife has managed to complete. And then there are others in the brown cabinet and we've got some space for future acquisitions. And then this is my drawing table corner of the basement 
where I don't get to spend nearly enough time. Um, those on the wall are a couple of lithographs that I got when I was in high school from a guy named Jim Lee. And then that drawing at the top was one that I did for the Midwinter Interlude a few years ago. Um, this is a project that I started a very long time ago, but haven't had enough time to work on it or to finish it. Uh, it's a copy of a stained glass window that is in the chapel in a video game called Diablo 3. Um, I had mentioned last week that I have an embarrassingly large collection of unfinished projects. Well, this is unstarted projects. I like collecting books of drawing paper, sketchbooks and notepads and things, but don't take the time to fill them nearly to the extent that I should. So books, Star Wars, which is a recurring theme. These are my vintage Star Wars figures that I had when I was a kid my huge Millennium Falcon, a Dungeons and Dragons map, Playmobil pirate ships that I found at Goodwill. And then this room is a disaster, but I told John Perlich in the fall that I wanted to give him a tour of this at some point. This is my toy collection. Mostly it's G.I. Joe and the light in here is terrible. G.I. Joe figures. I collected these pretty seriously for a couple of years. More G.I. Joe. I had about 900 G.I. Joe figures at one point, but I don't know how many I'm down to now. I purchased some of, some of my collection on eBay. Star Wars stuff up here. Those three red boxes are various Queen Amidala outfits from the prequel trilogy of Star Wars movies and they're not worth very much but they're gorgeous and they're some of my favorite pieces in my collection. And then a couple of gigantic adats on the floor. Those have been Goodwill finds. Complete ones of those are like 300 bucks on eBay but I think I paid a total of $60 for both of those, but they're missing a bunch of parts. Like you can see that one in the back is missing a door. That door on eBay is about 30 bucks and I'm just not in any hurry to buy one. So more stuff up here. These shelves are Star Wars things that are mostly organized by movie. So this is, except for the TIE Fighter, that's Hoth stuff from Empire Strikes Back cantina from Star Wars, mostly Bespin from Empire Strikes Back, Jabba's Palace from Return of the Jedi, more Jabba's Palace stuff from Jedi down there in the dark, and then over here a bunch of G.I. Joe stuff, and then some more Star Wars things over here, and then my cool giant cardboard cutout of Admiral Aquar from Return of the Jedi that a friend of mine gave me like 20 years ago. So this is my stuff. I love this little corner of my house. Um, it makes me feel like a kid again. And I said to somebody just the other day, my birthday was this week, and I said to somebody that uh, in my brain I'm still a 22-year-old idiot and this room makes me feel like a 10-year-old idiot and I absolutely love it. Um, I, I wish I could take some more time to get it cleaned up and get some better lights in here and um, make it a little bit nicer. But this is, my, this is my space in the basement, so thank you for indulging me for this week. Okay, so one more thing. Um, I told John Perlich I'd show him this too. 
Uh, this is a wooden box that I found at a yard sale for free on Lake Avenue um, about two years ago probably and it had a bunch of weird birds on it and the lid was off and the hinges were all destroyed and it was just in a free pile by this dude's curb so I picked it up and refinished it put like some vinyl panels on the top and on the front redid the hardware and added the corners and painted the whole thing and then I've turned it into a velvet lined treasure chest for my little collection of vintage Dungeons and Dragons books most of which I found at a yard sale over in Arrowwood a couple of summers ago for basically zero money it was sort of an awesome find and I really only bought them because I didn't want to leave them there I haven't ever done much with this stuff but it was just really cool and this little treasure chest seemed like a perfect home for them all right so that's my basement you can either have it um, improve or diminish your opinion of me that's fine so thank you for indulging me um, next on what's new at BSU we're going to tour someone's workspace <laughs> Welcome to my stay-at-home office space. We converted our niece's bedroom to the new workspace. I know that my husband appreciates me um, coming up with the DIY projects from Pinterest. He built the desk for me. I added that sparkle. And speaking of sparkle, we all need a little bit in our lives. The artwork done by Liliana and Coco McGoran. Well, the view is an overlooking Diamond Point Park. I can always take time to appreciate it. So just to talk about my coworkers a little bit, they really don't bring any good snacks to share and their chewing drives me bonkers. So on top of not contributing to any of the potlucks, my coworkers can be quite vocal. When they aren't singing at the top of their lungs, they're either sleeping on the job, micromanaging, or staring over my shoulder. Taking care of ourselves is very important, so go out and do something that you enjoy. Just be sure to keep one horse length between each other. I hope that everyone is finding a way to take care of themselves. Oh, crap. <laughs> Sorry, Molly. Uh, I was clicking so I could get ready to click, and I accidentally clicked. So there was like 10 seconds left. Whatever, this little show is crazy. Uh, so that's it for this week. I just wanted to remind everybody as we wrap up, um, our it's typical messages for the end of the show. Uh, we're all in this together. Uh, reminder of our two priorities, that our students and employees will stay safe, healthy, and well, that our students will complete their semesters, and that we are one of the mission state. So tune in next week. Again, same Beaver time, same Beaver channel for hopefully a little bit less chaotic of a show. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you next week. Awesome.